So you've decided you want to go ahead and use a RAF water system, or also known as an RWS. But you don't know what style of system you want to use? Well, that's what we're going to be talking about today. Let's get started. So when you're looking at RAF water systems or RWS, typically speaking it's going to be used with styrofoam or a food grade foam material. We can already talk about all the advantages and disadvantages of those and which ones you want to use. Look in the link shown here. However, that's for another video. What we're going to be talking about is we already know what type of styrofoam we want to use. Now the question is, what type of actual styrofoam do we want to use? There are two main types that you can use. There is your standard white that has a little square plugs that can fit your walk wool, rock wool one inch. Or you can kind of do it your own that you use the food safe styrofoam and you drill your holes in it. Because when you're looking at those two different raft systems, what it really comes down to is what's your method of growing. There are two methods. The first is going to be your rock wool. When you choose to use this rock wool material, what it is, is it's generally a graphite type material that's been spun very thin. And it's been spun into a cottony type little box material that is easily broken apart. You're going to go ahead and soak these in water and then you can plant your seeds in the holes of there. And then you can plant those into one little square inch containers of these little commercial greenhouse rafts. Now those are generally going to be two feet by four feet in dimensions holding approximately 32 plants per raft. These work very well and are very common within a large commercial center. However, that is purely based off of primarily the rock wool one inch growing sector. The next one that's most likely going to happen is using the net pot system, which are these little plastic net pots. Now they come in multiple sizes. They are go down your most typical size that you're going to see is the two inch, which is this size here, three inch, 3.75 inches, four, five, and six inches. Typically speaking, when you get up to the four, five, and six inch, you're looking at using five gallon buckets or another type of system, not, necess not necessarily the raft water system because once you get to net pots that large, they become so heavy, they start to bow down in the water. So typically speaking, you're going to see the two inch or the three inch net pot. Now, that's really the question that it comes down to. Which one do you want to grow? Because if you choose to grow with the Rockwell system, then you're going to use a commercial little square method with those. If you decide to use this system, then what you're gonna end up doing is using like this pink foam material, so that way you can personally cut out your little square and stick your net pot directly in it so it can easily grow. You then have it and float on the rod. Well, what we've decided to do today is we've decided to go ahead and use the net pot method simply because we have a lot of them. It's a little bit more adaptable than the rock wool and it allows us to use coconut core which as you guys know is my primary method for growing these materials. I can go ahead and dump the waste material into my compost feeding it to the worms and the other guys making it so I can do it again. That's one of the things that I love about the rock wool is it is very modular. It can easily adapt to many things. However, the downside is it is not reusable. It is a material that is quite cheap and it is easy to acquire. However, it is spun from a material synthetically created from its rock based material. And because of that, it's not going to decompose. It takes years for it to break down. That's one of the reasons why I don't like using it, because it's not as environmentally sustainable or friendly as coconut core is. And when it comes down to it, it's simply a matter of that, why I chose coconut core. And because I chose that method using the net pots, that's why I've chosen to go ahead and use the raft method that you cut the holes. So now we're going to go ahead and start showing you how to create that. Let's get started. So when you're going to look at various types of ro floating raft systems that you want to do, you want to go ahead and take a look at first the size of raft that you want to do. Now I've chosen to go ahead and do a raft size that is two feet by two feet for a couple of reasons. 
one, it's gonna be modular, so some of my smaller hydroponic systems that are only two feet wide can go ahead and handle that and it fits modularly in that location. The second thing is, if I wanted to, I could do a two feet by four foot raft. However, I can easily add a secondary raft here and that's going to do that. The second reason why I've chosen to do it, when these raft systems get laden heavily down with plants and water material that are heavily laden with that, they can potentially, if you don't hold it properly with both hands and getting it set up, can easily snap or break. And so by choosing to go with a smaller size, I'm gonna to have to move a little bit more rafts, but it's going to allow this material to be a little bit stronger. The next thing you wanna do is take a look at the type of material that the raft is in. Now, I've already got another video talking about the different types of raft materials and which ones you want, what type of foam you wanna use versus not. This particular one is XPS that we've chosen as signified in that previous video that we've already talked about. So, there's two different ways we can do it. One, we can go ahead and either use a heated pipe for the size of First off, what you want to do is take a look and see what size of plant or holes you want to do. Typically speaking, you're going to be looking at two different sizes. Your standard 3-inch net pot or your standard 2-inch net pot. Now, depending on what type of plants you grow and how often you want to do it is going to determine that. And I personally have two different sizes of rafts. I've got one that's drilled for 3-inch holes and I've got one drilled for 2-inch holes so that way it can accommodate the plant size that we have. For this particular raft system, because the vast majority of all of your leafy greens and the stuff that I grow is contained within the 2 inch net pots, that's what we're going to go ahead and drill for. So I went ahead and the next thing you want to do is take a look at the spacing of your system and how far apart you want to do it. Most raft systems you're looking at are going to be on the 6 to 10 inch spacing range. Now 6 inch is going to be a little bit tighter, 12 inch is going to be a little bit lighter, larger for your larger plants. Now because we're in a hydroponic system, we can tend to condense things a little bit more. And so that's what I've chosen to do, is do it a little bit more on the shorter side of having it on a 6 inch center. Now what that's going to do is that's going to cause us to have much tighter grouping and I can use my space much more efficiently. However, it's going to make it that we need to make certain that we maintain our nutrient solutions and watch it a little bit closer and have a little bit higher water or higher light density with this going on. If you have a little bit lower light, you can go ahead and open it up a little bit, but you're counteracting that by making it so you can't grow as much space. So there's two different ways you can do this. If you're only doing one or two rafts because you have a very small system, you can go ahead and measure, taking your ruler, measuring this out, and then go ahead and cut your holes. However, because I'm going to be doing so many of these, that would be a huge waste of time. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to be setting my rafts aside. Because you drill one, you're done. And then you drill another, and then you drill another, and then you go ahead and drill another. And you keep adding raft after raft after raft, and it just becomes a huge waste of time. And so, what you want to do is do what we're going to do, is we are going to make a template out of this ply board. You want something that's sturdy, but yet relatively cheap, that if it happens to get destroyed, it's okay. But because we're doing this, it's going to be a huge amount of time savings. We're going to go ahead and take our template, and then rather than having to measure each one individually, I can simply take my haul, saw hole, or if I use a heated pipe to go through the foam, whatever your method is, you can very easily then just set this template on top of your foam, and then go on without having to take the time to do that. Just simply take your template, set it right on top of the foam, and you can drill right through. So because we've chosen to do our raft system on a six inch center, just because we're gonna do higher density, what we're gonna go ahead and do is first measure the side. And what we're gonna do is, because it's on a six inch center and we're gonna be having these raft systems lay next to each other, we're going to do on from the edges three inches. That way, 
when each raft is butted up against each other, you're gonna have three inches on one corner of the raft, three inches on the center, allowing for that total six inch center. So we're going to go ahead and take our ruler with our pencil and we're gonna mark the edge at that three inch. And then we're gonna go ahead on six inches, mark it on the nine inch, and then we're gonna go ahead and move forward and on the 15 inch, and then we're gonna do it on the 21 inch. That way, it's going to allow us to have three inches on that side, like we mentioned before, where the two wrap systems, when they butt up against each other in connection like this, it's going to create that six inch center as described before. In order to make certain that it is nice and level, what we're gonna go ahead and do now is we're gonna take our ruler, flip it over, and we're gonna go ahead and do the markings the exact same way on the other side. And the reason why we want to do that is we want to get these lines straight. Now, there are a couple different thought processes. You can either do an exact grid system or you can do your net pots staggered so that way you can get them slightly closer together like in a diamond formation. In our case, we're gonna go ahead and do a square pattern just for simplicity. But if you wanted to, you could do that diamond pattern and you would still get the exact same. It all depends on what your personal choice is. So we're gonna go ahead and continue to mark. We've got them marked now on either side. Now the reason why we went ahead and marked on both sides, now we can take our ruler and just spread it all the way across and line these both up, knowing that we're gonna get a straight line all the way across and it's not gonna have some weird curve. So now we can go ahead and just take our line and just mark it all the way across and we have a very simple straight edge knowing that one side isn't going to be a little bit heavier down the other and we're going to draw lines all the way across now that we have our lines drawn all the way across we are going to go ahead and do the same thing on this side we're going to go ahead and mark it on a six inch center that way we can do a grid of the lines going this way. So here's my question that I want to ask you guys today as you're looking with your RAF systems. When you're taking a look at this and you're setting up your grid system, the most crucial thing that you're looking at is what is it that you are intended to grow? For me, like I've said before, I'm mostly going to be growing herbs and leafy greens for this particular raft system. What's your preferred method? Let us know in the comments section below. So now that I've got these marked on both sides, I'm going to go ahead and take this pencil and draw a straight edge all the way across. And that way I can very easily mark this grid. And one of the reasons why I'm doing it in pencil so I can very easily go back and redo it if I don't like it or I decide it's different or if I'm working on it and I realize, oops, I meant to do this for a different plant system or not. And if you're going to have different systems for different plants, what I would do is go ahead and mark your grid template what this is for, whether it's for the six inch two pots, that type of thing, so you can easily know. So now that we have all of these grid systems done, what we're gonna go ahead and do is we are going to take our hole saw and we are going to insert a pilot hole for that. And that pilot hole is gonna sit right on the center of that. That way we can drill through right on the center. And as we drill, then we can create these holes for this particular grid, allowing us to easily set the net pots. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and do. We're gonna go ahead and drill and then we'll be back. Now, as you can see, we've got our template fully cut out and we have the grid system here so that way they stand at a six inch center between the two different holes. Now, what we can do is just to make sure before we start drilling any raft systems, we can take our standard two inch net pot and place it in the hole just to make sure it fully fits. As you can tell, it fully seats in so we ended up choosing the right size. Good, that would have been bad. That's one of the things that I would highly recommend you do. Make certain that you not only have the right hole saw size for the right net inch 
pot or the net pot that you want to place into it but also once you're done make certain that you place it good so that way you've got it now that we've got the holes fully set up what we can go ahead and do is we can take our foam we're going to go ahead for our foam raft system or styrofoam and we're going to set on top of it now what we can do is we can take our template and easily place it right over the raft what we can then do is we can take our hole and instead of having to do this marking out for every single raft, we're going to go ahead and just set this on, secure it to the raft system so it doesn't shake or anything while we're drilling, and then we're just going to go ahead and drill that way. We're going to go ahead and do that and then we'll be back. So we've got our template. We went ahead and we placed it up against the styrofoam and we decided to go ahead and cut a few holes. And then we figured, why not? Let's cut a few more. And we kept on cutting and cutting and cutting. Could I continue? Yes, but I think my point is made. That's one of the reasons why you want to do the template. When you have sheet after sheet after sheet after sheet of styrofoam sheeting that you want to use to take your net pot and slide into, to make it a nice little home for these guys. As you can see here, the net pot fits great inside of it. I can even flip it upside down and it holds nice and good. That's one of the reasons why I highly suggest you use a template because when you're dealing with multiple sheets, it's going to make the whole process much easier on you. Thank you for joining us today as we went ahead and take a look at how to create raft systems with the coconut core and the net pot method. We greatly enjoy, appreciate you joining us to this video so that we could show you our growing method. And we look forward to seeing you next time.